time alive forevermore, our King Jesus is alive. Greetings brothers and sisters in Christ. Our churches may be empty, but the tomb is also empty, for he has resurrected. John 11 verse 25 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrected and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope, the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead. I just want to wish you all a happy Easter. May the Lord fill your life and home with his love, joy and peace. Wishing you a blessed and wonderful Easter. I will hand over to Sister Elisha to bless us with the Chronicle reading. Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. I will be sharing the Chronicle reading for today by Pastor Roshan Singh. It is titled, Have God's Faith. Then Jesus said to the tree, May no one ever eat your fruit again. And the disciples heard him say it. In Matthew 21 and Mark 11, we read that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem with his disciples. He came to a fig tree by the wayside. Jesus was seeking fruit when he found that the tree contained no leaves, contained only leaves but no fruit. He pronounced a curse upon it, saying, May no one ever eat your fruit again. In the next day, as Jesus and his disciples passed the same tree, the disciples were astonished to see that within 24 hours it had withered from the roots up. Rabbi, behold, Peter commented, the fig tree which you had cursed has withered. To Peter's comment, Jesus replied, Have faith in God. However, what Jesus actually said in its literal form was, Have God's faith. This statement highlights the special kind of faith we are speaking of here. That is, faith as a gift. Faith has its origins not in man, but in God. It is an aspect of God's own eternal nature. Through the gift of faith, the Holy Spirit imparts a portion of God's own faith directly and supernaturally to the believer. This is faith on a divine level, above mere human faith as heaven is above earth. The declaration of faith reads, Thank you, Father, for your word, this precious word, that teaches me to function in God like faith. In Jesus' name, Amen. I'll now hand over back to Sister Helen. Let us prepare ourselves to listen to the Word of God. Well, praise God. Welcome to our broadcast this morning. A happy Resurrection Sunday to you. It is truly a glorious moment in our lives as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The resurrection is so full of power. And um, as the Bible says that with, if Christ be not raised, then our preaching would be in vain. And that would mean that our faith too uh, would be empty. But we praise God that the tomb is empty. There's evidence of that. We have an empty tomb, but we are people now. We are full of faith because of that empty tomb. Now I want to encourage you, get your Bibles, get a notebook, get a pen. And uh, if you can, get some communion as we're going to have some communion together. Amen. As we celebrate um, Resurrection Sunday. So if we can just bow our heads quickly in a word of prayer. Uh, before we enter the word of God. Father, we want to thank you this morning, O oh Lord God, for your precious word. We thank you, Lord God, for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who would believe. So, Father, we thank you this morning that as the word of God flows, that it will flow steadily. Father, I pray for Lord God, those that are under the influence of my voice, those who are watching, I pray, O oh Lord God, that as the word comes forth, that 
They will receive faith, Father, that faith, O Lord God, they will be strengthened in faith. I pray in the name of Jesus, and I, Lord God, pray that you will anoint my vocal cords, O Lord God, to speak your word with clarity, O Lord God, and precision. I ask this in Jesus' blessed name. Father, we give you thanks and praise and glory and honor. In your precious name we pray, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, before we go into the word of God, I think uh, let's have communion and then we'll go into the word. Praise God. We remember um, on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body which is broken for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup and after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink it. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, given for the remission of the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Father, we just pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that, Lord, you would bless these communion emblems, bless the bread that we break, Bless, O oh Lord God, the cup of drink that we bless and drink, that these would become for us, O oh Lord, the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. In your blessed name we pray, Amen. The body of Christ. Let us celebrate the victory that Christ has purchased for us through his crucifixion, his death, his burial, and his resurrection to victory. Praise God for the victory that he's given us by the cross. Amen. I wanted this morning to share with you briefly concerning the resurrection and uh, I want to begin in St. John's Gospel, the second chapter. And this is an account just uh, after Jesus had uh, driven all the money changes and the people that were conducting business in the temple. And Jesus speaks to them and what he does is he makes a, a whip of cords and he drives them out of the temple. And he, he tells them that, you know, to remove everything because they're making his, his father's house a house of merchandise, a house of business. And then we find that the disciples uh, then remembered the, the scriptural account, which is recorded, which says that zeal for your house has consumed me. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. And the Jews, the Jewish leaders, of Jesus as they come to him and we pick up in verse number 18 um, so the Jews answered and said to Jesus what sign do you show to us since you do these things Jesus answered and said to them destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up then the Jews said it has taken 46 years to build this temple and will you raise it up in three days but he was speaking of the temple of his body. I want you to highlight that. When Jesus said, destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days, he was speaking concerning his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Hallelujah. Now the first point I want to make there, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is that we are now the body of Christ. Christ has risen from the dead. He has ascended to heaven. He's seated at the right hand of God the Father. And he has now given that power 
the power of the resurrection has been made available to you and I as believers. And I want to read Acts chapter number 7. And we'll see this here from verse 48. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne. I want you to understand this. He says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Has not, has not my hand made all these things? So that's the first point is that God does not dwell in temples or buildings or structures made by human hands, by man's hands. There is nothing that man can build that can contain God. Because God is omnipotent. He's omnipotent. He is omnipresent. God is all over. Hallelujah. Hence, you cannot confine him in a building. If we go to Second Chronicles, uh, sorry, Second Corinthians, rather, Second Corinthians, and I want to read. Praise God. Second Corinthians, chapter number six, and I want to read from verse number sixteen. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So, you are not only the, the temple of the Lord, you are a son and a daughter of the Most High God. You are His children. Amen. You belong to Him. So, that's the first point I want to make is that through the resurrection, we are now His body. And the fact that we are His body means that the power that He has, the power that Christ has, has been made available to you and I being His body. If we look at uh, the book of Ephesians, um, chapter number 1, and I read from verse 17, this is Paul's prayer to the church at Ephesus, and it's very applicable to you and I. It's still applicable. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and understand uh, the, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So he prays that God would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. I want you to highlight verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet, and gave him 
to be head over all things to the church. You see that? He put all things under his feet, under his authority, under his rule, under his dominion, under his power. So God has put all things under his feet and has given him, Jesus, to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. You see that? The church is his body, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. Hallelujah. In Ephesians 2, verse number 6, God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved. <laughs> None of us are saved by our own works. There's nothing that we can do that will ever save us. The Bible says our own righteousness are as filthy rags before God. The only righteousness that is acceptable to God is the righteousness which comes through faith in Christ Jesus and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. You are his body. In other words, you are a tabernacle of the Most High God. God has now tabernacled himself in you and I. So that's what Christ has done for us. Christ now has made a way of entrance for us to the Father, reconciled us with the Father. Having done that, he said, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will come to you. I'll send you another helper, speaking of the Holy Spirit. And he says that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will dwell in you. So the Holy Spirit dwells in you and I. Remember, God is spirit. And those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. Man is a tripart being. He has, he has a body, a mind, and a spirit. God relates with you and I through our spirit, our born-again spirit, our regenerated spirit, which has been regenerated, born again by the spirit of God. Romans 8 verse 11 says, If the same spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will quicken, in other words, give life to your mortal body by his spirit which dwells in you. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of you. You are the temple of the Most High God. You are a child of the Most High God. That is what Christ has done for you and I. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 tells us that we have the mind of Christ. So with the resurrection, with what Jesus has done through the gospel, Jesus has reinstated our positioning with God. God has given us our mind back in Christ. In Christ, you have your mind back. Because you do not have a spirit of fear, but you have a spirit of love, of power, and a sound mind. Your mind is sound. Praise God. You think the thoughts of God. You think the word of God. Hallelujah. Everything about you has changed because of Jesus and what he has done. Amen. The second thing that Christ has given us is newness of life. We read in Romans chapter number 6. If you go with me quickly, Romans chapter 6 and verse number 3. Do you not know as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, 
that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Hallelujah. When we walked through those waters of baptism, we identified ourselves with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. When we go through the waters of baptism, that is where our old man, our old nature is laid to rest. And the man that comes out of the water now, this is the new man created in Christ Jesus. This is the new creation being, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature, a new being. Old things have passed away. Your past is gone. It's forgotten. Yes, people will look at you, yes, and they may say, yeah, I know you, but they don't really know you because they know you based on your past and they base it purely on on the physical appearance, but they don't know that what has happened to you, it has happened in your spirit. That is how God works. He works from the inside out. You get a change of heart. When you receive Jesus, you receive the word of God into your spirit, into your heart. And all of a sudden, the word begins to work in you. Things begin to change. And that is the resurrection. There are things that are in your life that you once upon a time you considered, you know, you thought it was right or it was normal. But praise God, when you receive Jesus, those things were buried. Now, when those things are buried, Jesus now resurrects that in you. You find all of a sudden that if you were a person that was afraid before, you're no longer afraid because you have a spirit of boldness. You find if you were a person that was a weakling before, you're no longer weak because you are now strong. If you're a person who was, cons who was consistently sick, you find that you are no longer sick anymore because he's your head. Hallelujah. That's the gospel. The gospel is let the poor say I am rich. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the sick say I am healed. In other words, you are not the sick trying to be healed. No, you are the healed keeping sickness away. You are the rich keeping poverty away. You are the strong keeping weakness away. Praise God. Christ has done this all by his death, burial, and resurrection. The resurrection, brothers and sisters, has given you power and authority, the power of Christ. I said to you, you are his body. In Matthew's gospel, we find that Jesus says to the disciples, he says to Peter, you see, after Peter, Peter made that confession. He said, you are the Christ, because Jesus' question was, who do the people say that I, that I am? It's Matthew 16. And uh, they were, as they were conversing, and the disciples said, yeah, some say you're John the Baptist, some say one of the prophets. He says, yeah, that's what the people say, but who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, thou art the Messiah, thou art the Son of God. Hallelujah. And Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon Peter, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven Hallelujah. It is the Holy Spirit who reveals to you the Son of God. It is the Holy Spirit who testifies to you and witnesses about the Son of God. Hallelujah. And he says, truly, you are Peter. And on this rock, I build my church. So what Jesus says is, I will build my church. Remember, he said to the Jews, the Jewish leaders, destroy this temple, I will build. And I will raise it up in three days. Speaking of his body, his physical body. Now, Christ is seated in heaven at the right hand of the Father. He does not have a physical body here now, but there is a physical body that's in his church by his spirit. His spirit lives in his church. His spirit moves in his church. He has given us power and authority. The book of Revelation. I'm going to close with this one. The book of Revelation chapter number one. This is powerful. Revelation chapter number one. And I want to connect the scripture to Matthew's gospel chapter number 16. Praise God. Revelation chapter one and verse number 18. Jesus said, um, I am he who lives and was dead. 
and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Keys are symbolic of authority. Jesus stripped Satan of the authority he had over death. Hallelujah. Jesus took the keys back. He has the keys. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, and verse number 19. Praise God. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Hallelujah. Friends, we have delegated authority. Christ has given us his authority. We stand on this earth. We operate on this earth as his church, as his body. We operate not in our own strength, but in his power, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So he's given us our authority back. So number one, Jesus gave you your mind back. You have the mind of Christ. Number two, Jesus gave you your life back. You have newness of life. Number three, Jesus gave you power. He gave you power. Power to do the supernatural. Hallelujah. Supernaturally. The supernatural to a child of God is second nature. When you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's full of supernatural accounts. In the lives of people that had a relationship with God. So he's given you power. Jesus said you will receive power after that the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be my witnesses. So you get power to witness, power to testify about Jesus. Praise God. And the fourth thing that Jesus gave you was your authority. He gave you back your authority. And lastly, he gave you back your identity. You are a son and a daughter of the Most High God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you from today. Make up your mind and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus every day. Because when he died, you died. When he was buried, you were buried. When he was raised, you were raised. We're only waiting for now is his second coming. Hallelujah. And his second coming is very soon. Praise God. But whilst you are here, we must work the works of him who called us. The works of Christ Jesus. Praise God. Now, if you are watching this telecast and you don't know the Lord Jesus or you haven't made him your personal Lord and Savior, and or maybe perhaps you... You know, you had a relationship with God and you drifted off, you went your own way. And you want to make things right with God. I want to invite you this time to um, make things right with God. Just say the simple prayer of faith with me. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe with all of your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. So you believe and what you believe is what you speak we believe that god raised jesus from the dead and therefore he is lord that's what we confess that is the power of this confession so let us pray just pray with me pray just repeat after me heavenly father i come to you in the name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth your son i confess O lord god that i'm a sinner I've drifted from your path. And according to your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart to you today. I ask you this morning to come into my heart and to be my personal Lord and Savior. I believe that God raised you from the dead and I confess that you are Lord over my life. I thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I thank you, Jesus, for rising for me. Satan, you have no unsettled claims over my life. 
I belong to Jesus now. I'm a new creation now by virtue of the blood of Jesus. I'm a child of the Most High God. And I thank you now, O oh Lord Jesus, for all you've done for me at Calvary's cross. I ask you, dear sweet Jesus, to fill me with your Holy Spirit. And this I pray in your precious name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you, if you've said that prayer, the details are appearing on the screen. Please connect with us. Send us an SMS. Send us a WhatsApp. Um, send us an email. We'd love to... Uh, um, We'd love to send you a love gift. And um, also, please, wherever you are, connect with the church so that you can grow your faith. In your local area, find a good church where there's sound Bible teaching and a church that's full of faith so that you can grow your faith in this new walk of faith that you've received in Christ Jesus. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo saying, the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. And I love you very, very much. We always pray for you. Send us your prayer requests. We've got a team that is constantly praying. And uh, we wish all of you a very glorious Resurrection Sunday. Until next time, goodbye and God bless.